Well, hallelujah and blessings, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus the Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together the people of God say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is June the 21st of the year 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, we are continuing our study on the book of Revelation, specifically the seven churches mentioned in the first three chapters. And today we find ourselves in the discussion on the church of Sardis. And so that begins in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 1. Now, we'll read the entire text, and then we'll come back and we'll look more closely at each verse. So let's begin with Revelation chapter 3, verse 1. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast, and repent. If, therefore, thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now unto this young church in Sardis, Jesus begins by identifying himself as the one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Now, if you'll remember, the seven stars he holds in his hands are the angels that are stationed over each church. And the seven spirits of God we find revealed to us in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, which reads, And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Now, we discussed this previously in our timeline of the churches over the course of the last 2,000 years. And if you'll remember, the church of Sardis was the Reformed church or the denominational church that existed between the years of 1517 and 1648. And these are the years that Martin Luther began his Reformation in coming out from under the authoritative rule of the Roman Catholic Church and exercised wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord, and leaving the teachings that they were being oppressed by, and conforming themselves to what the Word of God truly says. And then after identifying himself, he says, I know your works. Now, if you'll remember in the previous churches, he said, I know your works, and, and you've been faithful in those works. But he doesn't say that about the church of Sardis. He says, I know your works. You have a name among those that live, but in all reality, you are dead. And so basically what they're being told here by the Lord Jesus is the fact that others perceive you as alive, but God sees through your hypocrisy and that you are dead. You have fooled men, but you cannot fool God. Now, friends, we know this to be true even in the day and age that we live because there are many churches that appear to be alive, but they're dead. And oftentimes the way we define a live church is based on how emotional it is what kind of emotions it brings out in us. I mean, if we were to tickle the ear and be told what we want to hear, of course that's going to cause an emotional response. But the Word of God and the Spirit of God oftentimes doesn't tickle our ear. His message to us is one of rebuke, correction, chastisement. And notice here that Jesus doesn't say you're dying that there's still some life in you that needs to be rekindled. He said, you are dead. And then in verse two, he says, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. And so if you look at verse four, he says, you have a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. So there are those in your fellowship that are alive in Christ, that are living in the spirit. 
And so in verse 2, when he says, strengthen the things which remain, that's what he's referring to. Acknowledge those who are among you that are living according to the Spirit. Surrender to their teaching and surrender to their leadership. Because if you do not, a little leaven will destroy the whole lump. And so you're either going to destroy these among you who are alive, or they're going to leave your fellowship and find a place where they can be strengthened in their journey with God. He says at the end of verse 2, For I have not found thy works perfect before God, mature before God. You're in a stagnant place. You should be showing signs of growth in your relationship with the Most High, but you're not. You're, you're still as babies, and you're failing to mature in your relationship. He says in verse 3, Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. And hold fast to that that you have received and heard and repent. Repent indicates go back. You need to go back to what you originally heard and be faithful to living out what you were originally told and taught. You have veered off the path. You have drifted and you need to return back to the original teaching that you received when you became a follower of the Lord Jesus. He says, if therefore you will not watch, I will come on you as a thief and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. Now, if you look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1 through 5, it says, And you has he quickened. Now, that word quickened in the Greek means reanimated. So you could picture it like a toy soldier that operates off of batteries. Well, if the batteries go dead in that toy soldier, that toy soldier is lifeless. It, it cannot move. It will not do what it was created to do. The moment that you put batteries, a power source, back into it, now it will do what it was created to do. And it says, you has he quickened. He's placed a power source within you, the living spirit of God. And it's only when the spirit of God is within you that you will operate according to the way that you were created to operate. In verse two, he says, wherein in times past, in the past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had all of our behavior in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others are. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, hath he quickened or reanimated us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. And so the message is, is that you started out right, but somewhere along the way you have ventured off the path, the straight and narrow. And that's what he says in verse four. He says, you have a few names in Sardis who have not defiled their garments. They are in the same condition as when they began their journey. And they are being very careful. They're being very watchful in their journey to make sure that they do not soil their garments, that they do not defile their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, says Jesus, for they are worthy. Now, there are those today who excuse their sin, their disobedience to God by saying that all of their righteousness is in Christ. And it doesn't matter how they perform in this life, what they're obedient to or what they fail in. And yet Jesus says here that you can defile your garments. Yes, you've been washed in the blood. Yes, your sins have been forgiven. But each time we do sin, we have to remember that we can go back to Jesus and we can ask that he will forgive our sins. And he's promised to be faithful and just in forgiving those sins. So he says in verse 5, Those who live faithfully before me that overcome, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name, out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Now, friends, there are those that would use this verse, verse number five, as a passage to argue against the once saved, always saved theology. Now, I'm not going to do that because you could cross-reference that with Exodus chapter 32 and verse 33 as well, but there are plenty of other verses that destroy the idea of that we are born again and then we can live any way we choose and yet we're forever saved. Our salvation is a continual process. 
We were saved because of what Jesus accomplished on Calvary. We're being saved according to our sanctification, living faithfully for the Lord each and every day. And we will be saved when we leave these fleshly bodies and we receive our glorified bodies. So it isn't a once and for all event. It's recurring and occurring moment by moment as we live before the Lord. But what we do see in this message to Sardis is the fact that because they have adulterated themselves with the world, with the teachings of the world, the practices of the world, the systems of the world, they have become dead. They are no longer living in Christ. And as we were told in Ephesians chapter 2, they need to be reanimated by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the only way to do that, as we're told in Revelation chapter 3, verse 3, our text, is they must repent. They must remember what they have received and heard. They must hold fast to what they have received and heard, and they must repent. And the message to the church to Sardis is just as much for us today as it was them then. So we must be very careful in not allowing compromise into our lives. We must be very careful not to rationalize or try to justify what we see in the Word of God must keep ourselves unspotted and separated from this world, its ways, and its practices. And as Jesus has finished each of these letters to these churches, that's exactly what he says. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. And so in this letter to Sardis, how does it apply to your life today? How does it apply to my life today? There are warnings in this letter that we should heed. And there are promises that we can stand upon. For he says, he that overcomes, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. He will live with me for eternity. I will confess his name before my father and before my father's angels. Well, friends, that's going to bring us to an end of our study today. Next time we'll pick up on the letter to the church to Philadelphia. I pray that your journey will be filled with the blessing of the Lord today, friends. I love you. Now, as he wills, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video.